What's up, you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm going to break down the classification of numbers for you. Now, first of all, the most specific are the natural numbers. And natural numbers are sometimes also called counting numbers. So these basically just include numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, right? All the way to infinity, essentially. So as you can see, this does not include the number 0, and it doesn't include any decimals or fractions or negative numbers, okay? So these are just positive whole numbers, okay? So this is the smallest classification, all right? Now, after natural numbers are whole numbers. And whole numbers are the exact same thing as natural numbers. The only difference is that it also includes the number zero, okay? But it also, like I said, includes one, two, three, and so on, okay? Now, uh, an easy way of remembering the difference between these two is the word whole, well, if you think of how would you draw a whole? Well, you'd probably draw something that looks like the number zero, right? So that's a little trick to remember that whole numbers also include the number zero, okay? So whole numbers are the second smallest classification, okay? Now, after whole numbers are integers. Now, what is an integer? Well, it includes everything that's in the natural numbers and whole numbers, okay? So like zero, one, two, three right, and so on, but it also includes the negative numbers. So it has negative one, negative two, negative three, and so on, all right? So those are what integers are. So they're basically the, the third smallest classification, right? Now, after that are rational numbers. Now, what are rational numbers? Well, a hint to figuring that out is by looking at this part right here where it says ratio. Okay, so a rational number is a ratio of two integers. So rational numbers include everything that we've already gone over right here. Okay, so just regular integers like negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, right, and so on on both sides. But again, the more specific definition is that it's a ratio of two integers. And if you remember, a ratio is really just a fraction, okay? So if I had a ratio of two integers, it'd look something like this, two over five. So as you can see, two is an integer and five is an integer, right? So two over five is a rational number. If I had zero over 12, this is also a rational number because I have an integer on the top and on the bottom. Same thing if I had negative 20 over one or negative three over negative 100, okay? These are also rational numbers because, again, these are ratios of two integers, right? I have an integer on the top and I have integers on the bottom. Now, something else that is also considered a rational number are decimals, but they are specific kinds of decimals, okay? They have to be either repeating or terminating. So, for example, something like 0 0.3333, right? I could just keep going on forever but I could rewrite this as 0 0.3 with a repeating bar over it, right? Now, this repeating decimal is considered a rational number. Why? Because I can rewrite it as a ratio of two integers because 0 0.3 repeating, that's the same thing as one over three. Okay, so since one over three is a rational number, 0 0.3 repeating is also a rational number because they are equal to each other. Now, the other type of decimal that is also considered a rational number is a terminating decimal, okay? So something like 4.5 or negative 6.92, okay? These are terminating, they end, right? They don't just keep going on forever. Now, why are these considered rational numbers? Well, because again, I can rewrite these as a ratio of two integers. So 4.5, I could rewrite that as 45, over 10, right? And negative 6.92, I could rewrite that as negative 692 over 100, okay? So that's why terminating decimals are considered rational numbers. Now, the last type of number that is also considered rational are perfect square roots. So an example of that would be the square root of four, okay? What is the square root of four? Well, that's just equal to two, right? Is two a rational number? Yes, it is, right? So since this is a rational number, that means this is a rational number, okay? Or square root of 16, that's equal to four, right? 
So since 4 is a rational number, that means the square root of 16 is also a rational number. Okay, now this is essentially the largest classification, okay? Because rational numbers include everything that we just went over, but it also includes everything down below, okay? So it includes integers, whole numbers, and natural numbers. Now, the other classification of numbers that we have are irrational numbers. Now, what is an irrational number? Well, they're basically decimals that don't terminate and they don't repeat. So a couple well-known examples of those would be the number pi, okay? Because pi, it doesn't repeat and it doesn't end, right? It's 3.14159, blah, blah, blah. It goes forever, okay? Also, the number e, okay? This is equal to 2.71828, right? And it just keeps going on forever and ever without repeating. Now, the other example of irrational numbers are non-perfect square roots. So, for example, the square root of 2 and the square root of 41, and there's plenty of other examples, right? But as you can see, when you take the square root of non-perfect squares, the answer doesn't end, and they also don't repeat, okay? So that's why they're also considered irrational. Okay, and one last thing I want to point out is all these rational numbers and all these irrational numbers, they can all be grouped together in one big, I guess, essentially the biggest classification, which would be real, okay? Real numbers. That is the biggest classification of numbers. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below. Also, there's a couple playlists attached that I think you'll find helpful. So definitely check those out, and I'll see you there.